Practice problem, we have a small black bee that fits inside a slot cut in arm OA, which rotates in a vertical plane at a constant rate. The block remains in contact with the end of the slot closest to A, and its speed is 1.4 meters per second for up until the angle of 150 degrees. Knowing that the block begins to slide when theta equals 150, determine the coefficient of static friction between the block and the slot. So for this question, it's SES at when the angle is 150, so the drawing is not actually representative of the moment in time that we're looking at. So if we redraw the moment that we're looking at, it means that we have this arm here, OA, and the block is here. The wall would be here, this angle would be 150, and this angle here would be 30 degrees. And it's asking us for that moment right before the block slips. So if we draw a free body diagram of the block, we've got the weight of the block going down, which is mass times gravity. We've got the normal force from the slot. And we've got a force of friction here that's keeping it up in place. If we draw the kinetic diagram, this would be equal to when it starts slipping, this would be mass times acceleration. Now this becomes the point when you need to decide which coordinate system to use. In this case, because you have rotation, it's not super obvious if you should use cylindrical coordinates or NT coordinates. In this case, I'm going to go ahead with NT coordinates. So that means that this acceleration would be in the normal direction because it's pointing towards the center of curvature. And then our tangential direction is tangent to the path of motion, and it would actually be here. So this would be MAT. So I'm going to move this up a little bit. Now when we do our sum of forces, we have summation of forces in the tangential direction will be equal to mass times acceleration in the tangential direction. Now our sum of forces in the tangential direction, the only forces that we have in this direction are the normal force and the component of the weight that's going in that direction. So to figure that out, I'm actually just going to extend our normal direction. I'm going to draw it like this because the normal direction here points towards the center of curvature. So I'm just going to draw that line into the free body diagram. And then the tangential direction, I'll draw connecting here to a triangle. This angle here will be 30 degrees. The reason for that actually becomes if you have a vertical line and here you have an intersecting line at an angle, this angle theta will be equal to this angle theta. So in this case, the problem gave us this angle equal to 30, so we know that this angle is also equal to 30. So that's how I know that my angle here is 30 degrees. So then, the, sum is that the summation of forces, this component of weight in the tangential direction is actually going to be negative because it's pointing this way. So we would have the normal force, which is positive, minus mg sine 30, and this is going to be equal to 0. because the acceleration of our block is going to be in the tangential direction. So then we now have an equation we can say n is equal to mg sine 30. In the normal direction, f of n is equal to man. The summation of forces in the normal direction will be here, the cos component of this triangle, and it's moving in the right direction, the normal direction, so it's going to be positive. And then we have minus the force of friction that's holding it up. So we have mg cos 30 minus the force of friction is equal to man. Normal acceleration is v squared over rho, so this is also equal to mass times v squared over rho. That's just from the formula sheet. So we can rewrite this as force of friction is equal to mg cos 30 minus mv squared over rho. The question was asking us to find the coefficient of static friction. And we know that force of friction is equal to mu s times the normal force. 
In this case, if we rearrange it, we end up with force over n is equal to mu s. And we have equations for the friction force and the normal force. So if we rewrite this, we have mg cos 30 minus mv squared over rho divided by mg sine 30 equals mu s. The masses all cancel out. Gravity is known, 9.81. The velocity is given to us as 1.4. The rho is given to us as 0 0.3, and so all we have to do is plug the numbers in and we end up with mu s is equal to 0 0.4.